But don't you think that, you know, when atheists talk about religion and they criticize uh, organized religion and criticize the Bible, they, they talk about things that are in the Bible that seem preposterous, right? They talk about people rising from the dead and walking on water, particularly the Old Testament, right? Like, to use that as a guidebook for life, you have to kind of ignore some of the stuff that doesn't make sense. Well, don't you think the, the Bible's a myth? Okay, the Bible, right. especially the Hebrew, the Christian Bible, comes out of the the Jewish Bible. It's a it's a retelling of the story in a different way. But the Jewish Bible is a myth, and the myth is the myth of creation and the myth of human experience. So what it does is uh, chapter by chapter, story by story, it challenges us with disturbing and bizarre images and it says well, why don't you try to understand this see if you can understand this what does it really mean to escape from egypt does it mean escaping from your inner pharaoh what does it really mean to part the red sea so these these stories are told uh, any myth is a dramatic retelling of an underlying reality that can't be expressed rationally now, this is part is why I'm subscribed to the Joe Rogan podcast, not because I essentially believe everything he says, but because I like responding to some of the hotbed topics in regards to Christianity. Now, in regards to this clip you just saw, I want to quote Joe Rogan word for word. In the video, he says, in order to use the Bible as a guidebook for life, you kind of have to ignore the things that don't make sense. Things like Jesus walking on water, Jesus raising the dead, etc. Now, apart from repentance, this is exactly why Joe Rogan and anyone who believes like him will perish on the day of judgment, because they are living apart from the one thing required for salvation, and that's faith. Hebrews 11, 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those that seek him. Now, what is faith? The Bible defines faith in Hebrews 11, 1 as faith is the confidence in that which is hoped for and the assurance in that which is not seen. The confidence in that which hoped for, the assurance in that not seen. Now, to respond to the lie that David Mamet said regarding the Bible, that it's a myth. Now, that's a foolish thing to say, being that a myth is a false belief or idea. And we know that that's not the case when it comes to the Word of God. Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and play a clip in which Brother Vody Bauckham gives one of the greatest apologetic responses of the Bible in defense of the Bible and why we can believe it and the history it holds. If you would open your Bibles with me, please, to the book of 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. Let me give you the question. Here is the question that I believe is the most important question for us to be able to answer. Because legitimate questions deserve legitimate answers. Peter says in 1 Peter that we are always to be ready to give an apology, an apologia, a reasoned response to anyone who asks us the reason for the hope that is within us. Here's that question. That question is, why do you choose to believe the Bible? That's the question. We must be able to answer that question in our culture today. It's a legitimate question that deserves a legitimate answer. But you see, because of anti-intellectualism, we hear that question, and usually we'll say something like, well, I believe the Bible because I was raised like that. Well, bless your spirit if that's your answer. But please, don't go out of here and say that to anybody. I, I, I beg you, please don't, don't do that, because that is not a reasoned response. I was raised that way, just doesn't cut it. Or sometimes, because we live in this culture of experientialism, sometimes because of this postmodern culture where what's true for you is not necessarily true for me, and the experience is king, there is another answer with which we have become accustomed that we think is a great answer to the question and it goes something like this. Why do you choose to believe the Bible? Well, I choose to believe the Bible because I tried it and it worked for me. We say that and then we sort of back up a couple of steps, you know, kind of let the answer sit there. Like we really just did something. You did, what you did was open a logical hole big enough to drive a Mack truck through. That's what you did. Because if your only answer is you believe it because you tried it and it works for you, what about that individual who used to be an alcoholic 10 years ago and he went to an AA meeting and they told him he needed a higher power, he couldn't find a higher power. There's a squirrel that came outside of his window every morning and he decided that squirrel was going to be his higher power. 
hadn't had a drink in 10 years. Guess what? He tried the squirrel. The squirrel worked for him. According to your logic, his squirrel has as much authority as your Bible. In the words of Regis Philbin, is that your final answer? I, I hope it's not. Let, let me give you an answer to that question that I believe is better than I was raised that way. Or it's better than, well, I'm Southern Baptist and that's the way we believe. Or it's better than I tried it and it works for me. I want to tell you why I choose to believe the Bible. Because I don't believe the Bible because I was raised that way, because I, I wasn't. I, I don't choose to believe the Bible because I tried it and it worked for me. My mother's Buddhism worked for her. That's why she was a Buddhist. Now, I need something more than just because it works. Here's the answer. I'll give it to you and I'll unpack it for you. I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. 